It is shooting from the lip, the social distance experience, if you will. It's the first shooting from the lip I've done in a few weeks because typically I do these at Baxter's, Time 42 in the Highlands, and the world is just turned upside down, man. And oh, yeah. uh, I took took some time off the, obviously, if I was wanting to stay with that same format of the, you know, on location, face to face with the guest, I kind of got put on hold, and uh, I'm able to still do some other podcasts. So I thought, you know, I want to connect with my local people because that's what shooting from the lip is all about. And my man Gavin Caster, who was scheduled for tonight, so I'm thinking I got to do this. I haven't talked to Gavin in a while, and he always yeah. supports me and my stuff. And but, Gav, what's up, Absolutely. man? How are you? You doing all right? Uh, I'm doing great, Kev. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Yeah. I appreciate all the props too. That's man. friends, man. Thanks, friends. Um, let's let's start real quick. You know, let's talk about you, health wise. Okay. How are you? Uh, thank you for asking. I'm doing uh, much better. Still on the mend. You know, it's it's going to be. I'm saying by the end of the year, before I'm a hundred percent, I still can't lift i'm trying not to lift anything over 20 pounds you know my day job there's a lot of lifting that i've got a guy helping me now they hired on and and he reminds me he said hey boss no that's that's my job you, know, if you need me to lift don't lift that so i'm like that's good take advantage i mean it's a combination of being uh you know having four surgeries in 10 months time and and yeah. being 57 years old you know <laughs> so, do you mind sharing again what what you were going through uh not at all um try to condense two years down into five minutes but, mm. um march 28th of 2018 i was diagnosed with prostate cancer uh, i always had um, an enlarged prostate it runs in the family got it from my dad but he never got prostate cancer but because I was so active, because I had day job, and then I, which was uh, working in a mill, or not a mill, but a woodworking plant, environmental health and safety, you know, get 9,000 steps a day. Um, and then I would do trim carpentry at night. Trim carpentry is what I did for 30 years, and it's extremely strenuous work, sometimes at 9 o'clock at night. That kind of and, physical manual labor, man. Yeah, up and down ladders, you know, lifting, um, squatting, really physical stuff. And I was proud that I was 55 and I could still do this shit, you know. Badass. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, two, three nights a week and on weekends. And then I had radio show that I did and I played music. I uh, did did gigs, played gigs as well. So all that, all that combined, and all the stress, you know, for doing that five years before, um, my body couldn't, my immune system just went downhill, and I got right. prostate cancer. We caught it really, really early, right. which is a good thing. Um, so um, there was one procedure that was not covered by insurance, thought, you know, we'll give it a shot, see if I can raise the money for it, which is $25,000 and got a tenth of that, which is okay. You know, I'm like, well, it's going to go two ways. Either I get the money or if I don't, I'll go another route. Mm -hmm. So I decided on surgery, robot surgery. And, um, but I had other issues as well. So I had, um, a colon that wasn't absorbing any water. So I was dehydrating for years, even though I would drink a half a gallon to three quarts of water a day, I was still dehydrating mm -hmm. because I wasn't absorbing any water. Right. So by the end of 2018, I had the prostate, which, which was so uh, swollen that I wasn't fully 
emptying my bladder. So I was becoming toxic with that and I was extremely dehydrated. And for all intents and purposes, I was dying. I was dying. Um, I did a side job. I think it was in September and it involved uh, running this one by six band board all the way around perimeter of the ceiling. And I was climbing up and down a ladder one step at a time, like an old, like an 80 year old man, you know, and I was 55 years old and I, I, I was really, really sick. So, um, January 17, uh, 2019, went in for prostate surgery. Um, you know, the prostate is generally a resting against the rectum, but mm -hmm. my prostate was 50% bigger. My rectum was inflamed. They were right there together. And so sounds um, painful. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it wasn't that painful actually. Okay. Um, Definitely uncomfortable though. All inside uncomfortable. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but everything was so tight in there that the urologist tried his best, but he accidentally cut the rectum two inches into the rectum. So they had to do emergency surgery. So a three hour surgery became a 10 hour surgery. And, um, and this is, you're, you're out, you're, you're under anesthesia. I'm right? under. Yeah. Yeah. But the you were, were you under was, the whole 10 hours. Yeah. Yes, I was. That's not healthy, is it? I thought there was like no, a, it's not. Yeah, that's unusual, right? Well, it's, yeah, because you open up, you open up anything in the colon, you become septic and you die. Right. And so um, they called an emergency surgeon. Yeah, the only the last thing I knew was I was going in for a three hour surgery, and at seven thirty, I'd be out at ten thirty. Um. An hour or two in recovery, I'd be in my room by noon, you know, mm -hmm. and <laughs> I got into my room and it was nighttime and I had no idea. It was, it was like 10 o'clock at night and, um, and I had this ileostomy. I had an ileostomy bag and what that is, is the, where the small intestine hooks into the large intestine, which is also known as the colon, that's right. called the ileum. And they had to, because they took out a section of my rectum and then reconnected it, that had to heal for eight weeks. So in order for that to heal for eight weeks, the colon had to be just basically shut down, mm -hmm. uh, not working. Things so had they, to be rerouted, if you will. Things had to be rerouted. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Detour. <laughs> Detour. Take, get off the so head. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm visualizing so, all this. No offense, but go ahead. <laughs> no, I've yeah, I've got pictures. Yeah, oh, on my love love and support page. Yeah. Um, so I went home expecting to have a catheter in, and I had a catheter and uh, an ileostomy bag, and a catheter stayed in for four weeks, and mm -hmm. until that the front front part of the plumbing healed mm -hmm. and then the back part of the plumbing I had another four weeks after that and right. then and this is all part. at the beginning of uh, 2019 right yeah yeah so eight weeks later March 15th which was almost eight weeks to the day mm -hmm. um, I had what they call reversal or takedown surgery they reattached the ileostomy actually it was it was never detached they just take what they call a loop Mm -hmm. They take the end of it, stick it out, and they open it up, and there you go. Right. So they stitch it up, stick it back in. And believe it or not, that was painful. That was excruciating. You know, the other part wasn't. I guess because they had so much liquid Tylenol in my system, I didn't have any pain Something the first time. numb you up. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No opioids, which was fantastic. Well, that's it's good. a new protocol. Right. Yeah, it's new, new protocol mm -hmm. and opioids never worked. I had major oh, yeah? surgeries in 2004 and I was still in an incredible amount of pain. I was just in this mm -hmm. fog, you know, and that's, this not bad, was amazing. That's, that's not a bad thing that it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, it just didn't right work. Now. Yeah. I mean, they gave, they gave me the, the hydrocodone and all that mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. 
right. for a shoulder repair and a hip repair. And it just, I was still in a lot of pain. It just in a fog that this, this time around, you know, no opioids for obvious reasons. And mm-hmm. I had two IVs in, they didn't hurt. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You know, and I was, had all my faculties. And, but, um, yeah, so I had the reversal surgery March 15th, and they said no lifting anything over 20 pounds for two months, which, you know, March, April, May, June, play July. Play by the rules, after, Gavin. Did you I play by, the, by rules. the rules? Very good. I did. All right, good. just check. Just check. But it should have been six months instead of, you know, eight weeks. And so in – Wait a minute. Why, why, why should it have been six months? Because I'm just hearing that. Because so, in – because in September, August, September, I started lifting, uh, and I was climbing uh, ladders and stuff, and I got a hernia where the site was. So you weren't supposed to. Yeah. Well, according well, to That's what I said. You're not playing by the rules then. No, no. I mean, eight <laughs> weeks from, from March, you know, is March, April, May, you know. And okay. it wasn't until August till I started lifting. Okay, stuff. So what, but but you said you mentioned the six months. What's the six months? Well, that's that's what they should have told me. You know. Oh, they oh six they six didn't months. tell you. But they did not tell me. Oh, okay. They told me they told me six to eight weeks. Oh, gotcha. And so, and so, um, yeah, I got a hernia, which it happens in fifty percent of heliostomy reversals. Anyway, I can see forty eight percent. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, so they, uh, so went in for hernia repair in August or October 8th. And so I'm still, and this doctor, you know, he put the mesh in and everything and it's all secured in there, but I'm still, uh, mending. He said, oh yeah. Yeah. Still mending mm. because I, I have to remind myself every day that I'm not healing from hernia surgery in October. I'm, I'm healing from four surgeries spanning from, across yeah, ten, for, for the past ten year. months. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, an entire year of surgeries and recovery. So, um, my wife reminds me of that too. You know, she said, "You're not going to be good till the end of the year." You know, maybe next year you can do heavy lifting or whatever. But, but you know, this guitar doesn't weigh much, and it's true. <laughs> my PA system doesn't do much you know i tried all during 2019 to get some kind of normalcy i did mm-hmm. have my my st matthew's farmers market gigs and i right. did play those which was great and i played that about six times which is unusually unusual usually it's about four but um i have one or two uh fill-ins which was nice so it's it's nice to feel uh needed and liked you know they're yeah. like oh we love you out here that's not a bad thing um no so you, you're physically mending you're getting back to your kind of old self but you, you're yeah. getting back to the music thing and that's i know that's huge for you you know be able to, to do that oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah big time i um yeah i played a couple of open mics i hosted a couple of open mics played a half hour sets and um i was really happy to do it my voice was back another problem with having the colon thing was was um by the last quarter or the last half of 2018 i was losing my voice by the end of 2018 my voice was almost gone it was very weak because uh, you need to stay hydrated Basically, it's a lubricant for your vocal right. cords, too. Mm-hmm. Right. So I was so- sounding like an old man, too. I was moving like an old man, and my voice sounded like this. And I tried to sing and get three work. songs out, and it would l- literally be gone. Wow. Know? And so now, you know, I'm very aware three of these a day. Mm-hmm. Now, this is uh, 24 ounces. So has it, has it changed your like for diet? You know, as far as that goes, oh, big time! Give me a, an idea. What's kind of a, a daily routine? I eat you? a lot more. Yeah. Well, before I, 
because the colon, it not only did it not absorb, here's how it works. The, the small intestine is what takes all the nutrients from the food. And the large intestine takes all the water out. Mm-hmm. And then what's left is what you get rid of. Right. And I didn't know that. And what was fascinating when I had the ileostomy is how fast it goes through. You know, you know, you have, I don't know how long the small intestine is. I, I looked it up and then I forgot. But it only takes like five minutes from from the time you eat till the time it goes out of that small intestine. It's five to ten minutes. It's amazing. And the slow process is the colon. And But I wasn't um, absorbing the nutrients of food. So I was spreading my meals out, but I was eating a lot of meals. I was eating a lot of meat. Uh, so I'll, because I keep the iron up. And, um, and that was before. And then when I got my ileostomy reversal, one of the things um, we had to hold on to, because when you have an ileostomy, the product coming out is swamp water and you dehydrate really, really fast. Wow. So they have to give you they have to give you this powder called cholestyramine that bonds everything up and slows everything down so you don't dehydrate. And I still have to take it every day, three times a day. But, still. Uh, still. Mm. Because my colon Go ahead. Well, yeah, for the rest of my life. Oh, oh okay. Wow. Yeah, okay. because I, I've tried skipping a dose or two, and the colon just flushes it out. So I'm like, well, oh, shit, you know, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Figuratively and literally. First and you said literally. it, then you did it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for the record, then, Gavin, check this out. For yeah. the record, your small intestine is about 20 feet long. Yeah. And your large is five feet long. Yeah. Yeah, some uh, WebMD info there for you. So. Excellent. I'm glad you looked that up. Yeah, there you go. I got my phone hanging on my monitor right now on my control room, so it probably yeah. work against it. That's nah, right. Yeah, twenty. You said twenty feet. Twenty, well? 20 feet. Twenty feet. Yeah. Holy hell. Yeah, that's a lot. That's sticking uh, in your gut. Th- three yeah. times. You know, more than three times your height. You know. Yeah. Not for like me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Jeez. I think you're as tall or taller than me. Yeah, I'm about to, yeah, I'm about to say. But you think of, you eat a steak, you know, and that's hard stuff, mm-hmm. but it still only takes about eight minutes to go through it. So it's rifling through that 20 feet. Rifling. That's a good word. <laughs> rifling. I mean, it's just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and uh, let's see, 20 feet, if it was 10 feet per minute, that'd be 10 minutes. Yeah. So, no, 10 know, feet per minute, that'd be two minutes. Two minutes, yeah. Two minutes, yeah. Two minutes. So it's about two, so, so it's about two feet per minute, yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so it's about like that, but it's a steady. I'm yeah. starting to think you, you really did watch the Learning Channel back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> well, I... I work on machines, and um, one of the things I do is make moldings, and oh. you have a feed rate. So, okay. you know, you've got 20 feet per minute, mm-hmm. 50 feet per minute. This molder that I make moldings on, it operates 35 feet per minute. You know? oh, so it's like, gotcha. not like that. So, yeah, I'm very mathematical, very boring sometimes. That's but, right. yeah, um Math geeks, was are not, math geeks are cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but so after yeah, that, dietary. Yeah. So after, dietary. Yeah. Um, that changed dramatically because uh, the cholestyramine slows everything down. I got my colon reattached and I was over, I'm, According to the body mass index, I'm supposed to be 150 pounds, which is ridiculous. Yeah. One six. No, nobody likes made. petite people. No. Nah. <laughs> but uh, I like to be around 160. I'm around 163, 165. Okay. Which is the throw it in. I've ever throw been. it in my face. Yeah. <laughs> it's the smallest I've ever been. All of 2019, I was hovering around 180. 
185. I think that's more healthy. Yeah. I think that's a yeah. lot more healthy. So. There you go. Yeah. You uh, gotta have at least reserves. my story. Right. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to have reserves, man. Yeah. Um, Especially nowadays with the uh, toilet paper disappearing. And the, you know, yeah. I, I still don't get that. And we're going to we'll hold that thought. We're, we're going to talk about current yeah. events in a moment. But you're, yeah. you're, you're yeah. back to you're back to. Almost back to your root, yeah. Mm-hmm. Your routine is back to somewhat uh, of a normal uh, place. Um, yeah. You're singing, yeah. Um, and then you were, you know, you when you and I first connected several years ago, you know, you were mm-hmm. doing your thing with WCHQ, and, yep. and which is great. The whole format there is great. Uh, oh, I absolutely loved it. it. Yeah, totally promoted original music. Yeah. Local. It was regional, phenomenal. Right? Yes. So it was phenomenal. Yeah. And the sad story there is that um and I honestly I don't know all the logistics on why, but mm-hmm. you all had to close it down. And that yep. ended what at the end of last year or right at the beginning of this year? Yeah. Yeah. December thirty first. Oh it was last okay. year. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They had a big party um uh that night. You know, New Year's Eve party at the station. It was, mm-hmm. and at twelve oh one, we shut it down. Wow! So, because uh, uh, that, that's anyway. like that's kind of like losing a friend, man. Because that was some every a lot everything about that was uh, just great in in the way it supported the local uh-huh. music scene. And but you also did yeah. you had your own yeah. show as well. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah. Do you miss it? On the, well, on that station, yeah. Yeah, on that station, it was, right. Um, it was, uh, yeah, in the studio with Gavin. Kind of stole a little bit off of Red Beard, you know. Oh, yeah, that legendary radio show in the studio with Red mm-hmm. Beard. But you put Gavin in there. then Exactly. Um, and you, that, was, that was an awesome show. It really mm-hmm. was. It was... Um, uh, and I'm say, not saying it from my standpoint, but yeah. go ahead. No, I was going to say, I recall being a guest on it at, at least once. Um, I think actually it was me and Greg yeah. back in the day, Greg, I think. And again, uh, just yeah. everything about yeah. that, because it was, you all had music. You, it was also some conversations, talk shows. Uh, is that... yeah definitely been put in the past. There's no chance on that resurrecting in the future. Yeah, there's no chance of it. No. Okay. She put all the right. building up for sale and everything. Gotcha. Yeah. All she right. sold all the equipment off. Um, yeah, Kathy, she poured, you know, her life into that thing mm-hmm. for nine and a half years, uh, just short of 10 years. Right. Yeah. And it began as a, began as a, a little concept she wanted to do like the old time radio stuff with mm-hmm. the local shows and like the farmers show and stuff. And of course she had Phyllis Fitzgerald and Patty Margay, which is really cool. Um, and um, so they had the local life and then they, she wanted to feature local music mm-hmm. because by the time she started the station in, um, 20, when was that, 2010, I think it was, I think it was 2010, there wasn't any local music being played. I mean, there was, QMF had one hour of local music mm. at 11 o'clock on Sunday night. That's right. And yeah. that was about it. Yeah. Um, and there was another station that might play it. They began playing when they switched over to AAA. They were playing a lot of local music because that's all they had in their library until mm-hmm. all the they started getting in all the AAA music, the Ryan Adams and the mm-hmm. and all the other people, right. and so the local music just kind of f- faded off into the ether. So there wasn't any local music being played, and so Kathy's got her little laptop on her dining room table, and she opened up a website, and it was a website station. And she had an AM radio license, and that signal last went out to about a block. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like 
it was like one watt or something. Right. Yeah. But but she um, but she was on the internet. Mm-hmm. So she was playing local music. That local music was going worldwide. Exactly. Right. And and then expanded from her dining room table to the basement there on Frankfurt Avenue. And that's where you and Greg came in. Mm-hmm. And um, and then eventually to the to the studio on Melwood, which we were there for about a year. Right. But that was I thought it was the coolest thing. Very absolutely the coolest place, the coolest vibe in Louisville. Yeah, I, and I, I knew a lot of, or no, I know a lot of my music friends who had played there. You know, just went in for the yeah. uh, you know the sessions or the you know the uh, interviews or whatever and. I had a good yeah. time. And real quick, what was the how, how many songs did you all actually have? You all had a shitload of original music on your. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, by the time it all ended, I want to say forty five thousand. Good lord! And, and when we say original yeah. music, define the area because you, you okay the re yeah the region right. mm-hmm. uh, was all of Kentucky right. Southern Southern Indiana, so right. Clark Floyd counties, uh, yeah. and Cincinnati, basically what bordered mm-hmm. what bordered Kentucky. That but was it, and that's of, it. That was that's, that's the it. demographic or geographic or whatever. Um, and yeah. to still have forty four thousand. How yes. old were How old were some of these? Oh, some dated back in the forties. Oh wow! Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, we had Gary uh, Sampson and um, mm-hmm. uh, now now they're all escaping me. <laughs> oh, Gary Sampson was a library guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the music director and archivist. And he was, well, for instance, um, I don't know if he was still working with um, the guy at Mom's Music. And I'm Excellent. drawing a blank everywhere. Yeah, Mac- Marvin Maxwell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got all the Sambo uh, studio recordings on the tapes, different kinds of tapes at Mom's Music. And uh, Mom's Music has, they've got like a vault. He, walk, he opened up the door and there were stacks to the ceiling. And, wow. and Marvin's uh, concern was how do we get all these in digital form? Mm-hmm. You know, and so we've we got different ones in recording studios that have the have those tape machines the 24 right. track mm-hmm. two inch tape and they could transfer that over and i don't think that right. was done yet but oh. but he had hundreds of recordings wow you know hundreds of recordings and so there was that you know and, and that's that constant treasure hunt going all through um there's there and then there's uh louisville public library mm-hmm. has a lot of recordings that's like, true right yeah and that and the sense. Louisville yeah. Orchestra, and, yeah. And now um, U of L has a new archive library, oh, and okay. they they are archiving uh, Louisville original music. And Lou Tingle, who is you know officially the unofficial photographer mm. of WCHQ and musicians here in Louisville. Right. He's just an incredible photographer and a beautiful soul. Anyway, he um, he submitted uh, his photos to that archive, Louisville Music Archive, and so my my face is in the archive now, cool. <laughs> along Very with so cool. so many others. Yeah, yeah. Right. Derek Manley and all mm. all of the staff. Right, all of the staff is in there. Um, uh, so yeah, so there's yeah, there's Char- Charity Radcliffe and Derek Manley and Michael Charity, Logston. Yeah. Charity, did she move? Yeah. Did she move or did she? I know she was She's with you guys. Town, yeah. She's still in town. Okay, all right. So far as I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember her Let's being see. on in the past. Yeah. Yep. And um, and of course, and and thankfully, uh, Lou was able. He he has a few pictures of C.J. Cumberland, but I don't think that mm-hmm. I don't know if he was able to get any of them in the studio. Um, but he had him out, you know, performing and stuff. How long so has, it, has it been since C.J. passed? 
Has it been a year, year and a half? Is it? Yeah, it's, I was going to say it was it over was a year, right? It was 2019. Yeah. Was it not? Yeah. Okay. All right. I can't, you know, I can't remember. I, 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 um, yeah. Uh, that's a good guy. Um, it's good to me. Oh, so, he, yeah. yeah. Like, like, oh, yeah. he was, yeah, n- yeah nobody better. Mm. Uh, he was a, he is a, quite a hero. I mean, in my eyes, um, say what you will. Yeah. He had, he had his problems and he, he came clean with them, you know, with addiction and he cleaned up his act a lot. And unfortunately, uh, as when he, uh, when he went into, uh, the healing center, he developed the stomach problems and that's when he went to the doctor and found out he had stage four pancreatic cancer and he oh. died. He died four weeks short of his one year anniversary of uh, go, coming clean. Mm, wow. but, um, but, you know, despite all that, that he had a beautiful heart and he did more in the music scene behind the scenes and never asked for credit for it than anybody. He was yeah. the go-to guy. You know, Great Day Live. They got all their guests through CJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't have a guest the next day. Holly would call him up, call him up, and say, "Quick, CJ, I need a guest for tomorrow mm-hmm. morning." He make it happen. And, yeah, yeah, and he'd make it happen. Um, he, he he always supported me too. You know, and that that was very flattering. We he and I got really really close. He was in that when I first met CJ. He was in that or he, his band, his band or what? Three chords and mm-hmm. was it three chords in the, and truth? the truth? Yes, yeah. yeah, the duo, yeah, right. And I, it was then that I re- I didn't know he was so good at guitar. Man, that guy mm-hmm. could really play. Yeah, he's, he's a good musician. I had no idea. Yeah, um, for go ahead. No, I was just say let's just trying to bring it closer to today um yes I, you know it would i would have i have to bring it up where are we at sure. where the world is today how are you everybody good on your end regarding this virus we are okay yeah so far and thank thank you for asking that mm. that was quarantining are you distance doing all the distancing as well and uh we're not quarant- quarantining yet um you know because well, financial reasons, but right. I still have a job. Where I work, uh, we, we're in a manufacturing facility, and all the workstations are 20 to 50 feet apart. Okay. So nobody distance, comes within right. 60 yeah. feet. There's okay. distance. Mm-hmm. So there's that, and we've just upped our hygiene, personal hygiene. You know, I've, I've mm-hmm. got my, pers- my hand sanitizer I keep in my pocket. I'm always very very uh mindful of that right. and everybody else is too and it's just common sense stuff you know every every common surface every doorknob uh faucet handles all that you know you don't hit the faucet handle with your hand you use your fist back your hand mm-hmm. and uh if you got a pull handle and like in the restroom hold on keep the towels in your hand and use the towels to pull, pull the handle stuff like that in, so in we're, fair, we're really good yeah in fairness <laughs> a lot of what we're having to do now ha- having to do is what we sh- some of it a lot of it actually probably yeah. a lot of it is what we should have been doing as far we as should have been doing the, the yeah. whole hygiene thing but um yeah you're exactly right. That that was the big joke for a couple of weeks. It's like, you mean to tell us now that all these people have not been washing their hands? No, like, no. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going to go, what, what is your take on the toilet paper thing? Uh, God, I have no idea. Um, I, I made up a funny post because I'm in several Reiki uh, groups mm. on uh, Facebook because I got into Reiki energy healing and there's, there is a phrase just for today. And there's five precepts just for today. Uh, Do not be angry. Do not worry. Be honest, be grateful and show compassion to yourself and others. And so I made this post of a beautiful sunset, you know, photograph and just for today, 
I am grateful for my toilet paper, you know, and posted <laughs> that. In the and I've got like a hundred likes on it. It's hilarious. But I, I don't understand toilet paper. What happened to the milk, bread, and eggs? Yeah. Um, and I think those are still, you know, being uh, consumed as well. But I, I just think from yeah. from my conversation with people is that somebody started the whole hoarding thing with the toilet paper and it was just, you know, yeah. mass hysteria. Just people just said, well, yeah. they must know something. And they're, you know, we, you know, yeah. it just that momentum picked up and, you know, here we are. Yep. And then every, <laughs> every other social media post is about toilet paper, which is kind of driving me crazy too, but yeah. I, mean, I, I get <laughs> it, right. the humor, people trying to, you know, uh, do things, say things to um, keep a smile. Yeah, on the face. empty, yeah, empty toilet paper roll and the and the cup of water, like the sweet potato thing. Yeah, but we've never, you know, in, in our lifetime, Kevin, we've never had a, anything close to this. I mean, there's no. been certain viruses and stuff, but never to the to the uh, capacity where life as we know it is basically, you know, we're on shutdown. You know, yeah. Now, fortunately for me, you know, with my my job, uh, you know, I'm still I'm in corporate IT, so I'm working from home, and yeah. that part's covered. But you know, a lot of our friends, our music friends, people in the service industry, a lot of people, you know, are not working right now, and they're doing. Yeah. You know, the, our mu- music friends are doing some creative things with the yeah. uh, Facebook live streams great for them and you know i'm doing my part to share and help promote those um what else are you yeah what are what else are you seeing out there for what people are doing because i know we know when it comes to like the food industry um like my daughter she's going to claire she's going to school but she works part-time at lulu you know with jared matthews at lulu yeah my favorite place yeah so she can't she's not able to work right now so, you know, there's going to be some daddy support there, mom and dad, but uh, yeah, but it is what it is. But, uh, I mean, I guess what uh, other things creative have you seen people doing to try to help help the cause? Um, I don't know. I've, I've been keeping my eye on, on the, the government thing. Of course, mm-hmm. Andy, superstar Andy Brashear, and He's they were saying. He's been a badass, man. <laughs> he really has. Yeah. and. They're actually talking about those who are in the service industries, particularly restaurants, because, you know, people say, oh, they get a wage. They get a wage. It's about two ninety an hour, yeah, you yeah, know, three dollars an hour. And mm-hmm. the rest is tips. Right. And so and then they got a ten ninety nine or whatever. They got to mm-hmm. report those tips. What are, and so they're trying to do a work, a workaround for mm-hmm. that. And for those who, you know, if I were. Uh, still in the contracting business where I would only get a 1099 and not mm-hmm. have social security, they were going to try, they're working on that too. So that's to me, that's really badass. I mean, it's a whole lot different than what the great recession didn't was and everybody lost everything right. like myself. <laughs> well, you, you, brought, you brought that. up, yeah, you brought up Bashir and um, yeah, you know, without getting too political, it's kind of hard right. to. Um, his predecessor, I don't think could have handled it the way. I agree, Governor Bashir. <laughs> so yeah, I have uh, to agree. And uh, I, I think just, I'll, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that Bashir has been in that in that building as Attorney General, mm-hmm. and he was a real badass as an Attorney General. That's a good I point. Mean, he really. He really looked after the people of Kentucky. He was on top of all of the price gouging and scamming and all that stuff, and even the the uh, scam phone calls. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you receive that number. Of course, these places they're they're constant on rotation, but right. still, he did his best to mm-hmm. control all that. So he seemed to be, even though I I don't vote, I don't get political, but to me, as a as an observation. He was the illogical choice, mm-hmm. you know, for, for governor because he's been there, you know, and he knows the needs of the people of Kentucky. And now, you know, 
holy cow, he, he really stepped up to the plate. Uh, venturing outside of the state without mm-hmm. trying to pin you to pin you down too much from a political as as or perspective. Oh, no. What's uh, yeah. been your take with uh, how the president's handled this? Oh my! Um, Enough said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> uh, well, well, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to say too much about the person, but, uh, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, we talked off record a few days ago, you know, I've had this little awakening. And one of the things that I was learning about, uh, is souls. And, you know, people have said about me when, when I was young, I always acted like an old person, you know, so, and you call that kind of person an old soul. Mm-hmm. And, then I learned there's something, there's really something to that. A new soul is somebody who hasn't lived that many lifetimes or maybe mm-hmm. have not lived a lifetime. Right. And so that's the kind of person that they're, they're risk takers because they want to try everything all at once and they go out there and they act like children. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and they're narcissistic. They're always the victim. And so that's what you would call a new soul. And an old soul is somebody who's humble, you know, grounded, and they don't think much of themselves. They're always putting everybody else before Mm -hmm. them, their own needs, you know, yada, yada. And so that's my take on the president. He's, He's a very young soul. Even though he's 73 years old, you know, he knows what it's like to be on top of the world, you know, mm-hmm. materially, and he's right. going that route. And 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 the saddest part that, and again, it's just observation. It's not political. It's just an observation. Is, is the fact that despite this horrible epidemic epidemic that's going on, uh, we were watching the news conference. When was it? Monday, Sunday, or Monday? Mm-hmm. Halfway through. Um, he started playing the victim again. Right. So he started playing out, you know, I've spent over a billion dollars and this is what you're, you know, and you're still doing this to me. You're still doing this to me. And so my wife changed the channel and I said, and now all the TVs in the nation are changing their channels, yeah. getting their channels. And it's, well, not all and, of them. He's got yeah, his, he's got all. his core. He's got his base. Good. <laughs> he's mean, got his core base. Yeah. But again, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to characterize him. I'm just going to say it's a sad situation when that happens, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and well, keep I'm in mind, again, he's got the 180 here. Right. Well, it's, it's, was for him, it was a 180 because, you know, when the, you know, it was the overhyped media, it was, you know, yeah. you know, just kind of yeah. blowing things out of proportion and he downplayed it quite a yeah. bit and yeah. you know and his tune changed uh once he got some true experts involved some true people yeah. in the medical field but then i'm recently yeah, i just I heard today gavin i don't know if you heard this either that he's hoping to basically um you know by easter did i hear that yes. right yeah by easter he wants to open it back up again yeah wow because um, businesses aren't making money, you know. Yeah, I get that. I, I they want to be boost the economy, but well, I mean, I guess. Um, well, politically, you know, if he opens it up and the economy is fantastic, then there's re-election there. Oh so. yeah. Mm-hmm. And and again, I'm not. That, that's an observation. Yeah. Um, well, we don't have to. But, we can yeah. we can end it right there. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, did I mean, hear, we can put our feelings into it. Yeah, no, and it's it it becomes it is what it is. What one thing I did hear? Yeah, yeah exactly. He, Jeff Bezos is, yeah. um, you know, this is a guy who's worth like over a, a hundred billion with a B dollars. Yeah, is uh, establishing a Amazon relief fund so that people yeah. like you and I could donate to Amazon. To help his <laughs> people, 
Yeah. Um, now, in fairness, I say fairness. Uh, there, this a relief fund he's establishing, like, uh, or he's putting contributing like twenty five million up front. Um, but again, you're talking about a guy who's worth over a hundred billion, and and Amazon itself yeah. is worth one trillion dollars. I want to do yeah. it in the the way Doctor Evil would do it. One yeah. tr- trillion, trillion evil dollars. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, laser. So, laser. Magma. So, yeah, so you're talking about $100 billion. So $25 million is 0.025%. I knew you would well. come up with that. I knew you would. Yeah. I have faith in you. Yeah. Um, you know, here's the other 20- thing. I- Five thousands of his, yeah. you know. So what is it? Yeah. He could he could put a billion dollars into it and it'd be one percent of his total wealth. Right. Exactly. Um, I, I deal in percentages too. No, I'm I'm glad you're helping that's me out. Part, here. Of, part of my EPA thing. You know, <laughs> you know one thing uh, we're gonna switch gears and get off the whole political thing. Get out get out of the kind of the um, real world, and I want to dive into the yeah. paranormal world. Something we we recently had a conversation of, you know, uh, the, yeah. the cue the X Files theme music. Um, you know, t- I, right now, if you if you count this podcast, I've got four podcasts going. Yeah, uh, congratulations! Yeah, and uh, uh, it makes my me kind of a, an idiot. To, yeah, so <laughs> but two of them I do a, this. I do a sports one, and then I do mm-hmm. one that's a full paranormal show with Tiffany Mac and yeah, and then I do. That's a great uh, one. A true UFO show with two guys that uh-huh. are all over like the history and travel channels. That's a great UFO one too. Shows. So, and I have so much fun. Those are great, great podcasts. And, you know, you and I were talking the other day and I didn't realize that you, you have, you know, your own paranormal thing going on. Yeah. Surprise. Share, share with that. Share with me a little bit of that. Here's here's the funny thing. I'm going to drop a big bomb here, and there's a reason for it. Wait till you get your water swallowed down. Yeah. Okay. I was up until 2008, because I left the faith 12 years ago, but I was raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And the reason why that's a bomb, you know, people are like, oh, my God, really? But they're uh, go, one of the basic- knock on the doors? I have knocked on the doors, yeah, for one of 46 years, yeah. Are you, for, God, are you serious? Here. No. I was I was 46 years old when, when we left. I'm 58, yeah, okay. so 12 years ago. Okay, all right. Okay. So one of the basic beliefs is the, the soul does not leave the body, you know. Mm-hmm. For some reason, all other religions teach that your body is a vessel and you yourself are a spirit living in it, but... Not the witnesses, you know. They they teach that your soul and your body is one, and when you die, your soul dies with it, and mm-hmm. you're done until your God resurrects you in in the last day. So, um, so the beginning of my awakening, it's it was kind of weird because my parents were chiropractors, brilliant people. I was lucky to be born into the family that I'm in. I'm the young, youngest of six kids and we, we go 20 years apart. Mm. So my oldest sister is 78, um, 70. She will be 78. So here I, I was, you know, um, soul and body, but I knew that it was wrong. You know, that was off because I was receiving messages from my mom the past. Well, since she passed, uh, back in 2005 and didn't Messages. know it was her. Yeah. Yeah. And I just made this connection recently, um, around 2006, something like that. Traffic lights would turn on me. You know how 20% of the time you come up on a traffic light, you're like 200, 300 feet away and they turn yellow. Mm-hmm. And that happens normally about 20% of the time. This happened about 80% of the time with me. You'd always get, and you'd always get, I would, the light. I always get yellow. I would 
always get the yellow light. And it was either a slow down, which I did half the time, or speed up because mm -hmm. they would they would the be other half red. Of that. <laughs> yeah, the other half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The other half of the time. Right, any time. But you know, they always turn yellow at the point to where I was underneath the light. It was red. It was mm. really weird. Now I thought that was. Don't they do that all the time? And my wife said no. And my son was fourteen at the time. He said no, Dad. It didn't happen. And then his friends would be riding with him in the back seat, and he said, "God, why do the traffic lights always change on your dad? That's a, that's weird." So, I just made the connection mm -hmm. recently. It meant it meant slow down. I was doing way too much at that time. I was running a business, still doing side work, killing myself. But, um, but then I get other audible messages, and it's not like something you'd hear in your ears. It's something you think you're imagining like uh when i'm when i was trying to uh, advance my music here in louisville and i would come up on a roadblock and then the words aim higher come would just come to me aim higher and okay well should i go global you know i got my songs on reverb nation i got yada yada mm -hmm. but uh I was still working, 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 working. And so um, I had my awakening after my first surgery in January when, and this is where it all comes around. My parents are chiropractors. I knew all about the body. Brain runs everything. Right. Involuntary runs everything, whether we're aware of it or not. And the next day, the, the, um, or two days later, I think I was in the hospital for six days, and the uh, ostomy nurse came in to show me how we changed the flange and stuff on, on the belly, and she had this off. And she said, yeah, there's your small intestine. It, it moves on its own. And I'm looking at this thing, and it's moving on its own. And I could have very easily reasoned, well, you know, it's an involuntary movement. The brain is running it. But I don't know why. The thought just came to me. It's like, I am a spirit living in a physical body. I'm not, this is not me. I'm looking at this. Mm -hmm. And that's where it all, it all hit me. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm a spirit. So it started from there, you know. About, about when so, was this? January uh, 20th of last year. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm, and I'm writing a book. About all yeah, this you, too. Yeah. So I thought I'd look into Reiki because uh, a friend of my son's, they grew up together. She is a Reiki master. Uh, I, knew t I know a couple others, and Reiki Sh is. Share, with, share what that is for the audience that doesn't know. Yeah. Reiki is energy. It's, it's, it was given a name. It's been around thousands of years before Christ. It's basically energy healing. And it's literally, it's uh, Reiki means universal life force, mm -hmm. also known as unconditional love. Uh, ki means uh, energy or force. That's in Japanese. In Chinese, it's called Chi. And in Christianity, it's known as Holy Spirit. And it's, it's speculated that's what Jesus used mm -hmm. when his, he healed people. Right. But he healed people on a huge scale. You know, I can't cure people like Jesus can. But basically the light force comes into your crown. Your body has different energy centers called chakras. You've got your crown, your third eye, your throat, your heart, uh, your solar plexus, sacral, and your root but the energy comes into your crown and out, out your hands. And so um, it, it kind of tricked me because I just want to learn what Reiki was just out of curiosity, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't think it would happen to me or anything. I just want to know what is this Reiki everybody's talking about? Cause I'm at home and I have nothing to do and I like to learn. I don't like watching Matt Locke and, <laughs> Murder, she wrote. I'm not into that stuff. Right. I watched it 
50 years ago. I don't mm. need to watch it again. Because mm -mm. the, so, the end, ending's still the same. Am I right? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just once, I'd like somebody to say, stay away from Jessica Fletcher. God, somebody just, died. Just once, I would like the bad guy to win. How about that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, you know, I pulled up some YouTube. There's a YouTube course, a couple of YouTube courses that you can take, and um, started reading books. And the way it works, you usually find a Reiki master, and they give you what is called an attunement, which is like tuning a radio into a station, and that brings your body to the same wavelength, and it's all... If you can hear me, you're frozen. Sends you into that energy oh, so that it. Okay. You you froze okay. up. You froze up for a moment. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, so the energy flows through you, so you are attuned, and so that did not happen to me. I the energy started flowing on its own. I did all the reading and meditations. Uh, there's meditations that you can do. I just did it because. I had gone through a shit ton of shit, basically, with all the surgeries. Mm -hmm. And um, and another thing that really got to me was uh, before the last surgery, um, my wife brought out that uh, I was so calm through the whole thing. She said, you know, normally somebody would be so depressed or angry mm -hmm. and you weren't like that and and all I kept thinking was the, all the healing energy that everybody was sending me because I was very content and very calm and so I felt like I owed I wanted to give something back to the universe because of all that love and energy that was given to me wow. and that's the that's the key to th think about all this people think of angels or devils or demons it's all energy just like the light you know we have lights and light bulbs but the, the light is emitting out that's energy mm -hmm. and that's what that's what this is it's not there is positive and negative energy just like in electricity but when you look at it as all energy then the fear goes away and you don't want fear because bad spirits bad energy bad entities like fear that mm -hmm. if you go into it is you're just energy you don't have authority you can't hurt me so um anyway um so yeah i uh i read all about it the books and it began the modern day reiki practice started in the 20s and 30s in japan and that usually took years to do. And now you can get the books on Amazon. Um, there's three levels of attunement. I only received one attunement. And come to find out that um, it's like it was like a baptism. Uh, I've become very close to several psychics mm -hmm. who did past life readings on me. And... Uh, they said, were you convinced? Well, first off, that, that's when I was convinced. Okay. And it wasn't the fact that one psychic told me this is mm -hmm. the fact that three psychics, psychics, three different that told, didn't know each three, other that did not know each other yeah. told me this. They, or they didn't do a reading on me. They didn't know each other until after they gave me the readings. And mm -hmm. now they're all best friends. But, um, and then they're but like, what, 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 other, what other dirt can we come up on? Come up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that he won't know about. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, he, uh, but what's wild is, you know, with Reiki level one, the energy flows through you and you practice it on your pets and yourself. You know, you wait three months and you learn the positions of there's hand positions and everything and then at level two you're given another attunement then you're given the symbols there are symbols that you use that really 
help the practitioner to focus certain types of energy. There's activating, there's, there's healing energy, there's emotional healing, so forth. And then there's the lev level three, which is the master level. And at level two, you could start doing distance healing. Mm -hmm. So um, energy started flowing out of my hands, and it feels like, you know, when you're, like your hand or your arm starts to go to sleep, but it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, at, right at that moment, you feel like, like the tingling. Mm -hmm. And that's what it felt like. It feels like thousands of microscopic little needles. Uh, orbs of <laughs> Yeah. yeah, little needles yeah. of light L yeah. flowing. Right. But you feel it flowing. Mm -hmm. It was gotcha. the weirdest thing. Huh. Um, so I practiced oh. on my wife, our cats, myself. Your cats, really? Um, yeah, animals love it. Oh. What they do is they, they put their head right up. I'll put my hand up like that and boom. Wow. They, they want that energy. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Animals are very aware of it. And then um, received an attunement in, on Thanksgiving weekend by a friend, usually pay for it. And I was waiting to, be, to get the money, like this time, mm -hmm. to, to pay for it, to take a course and pay for it and get certified. But this friend said, I think you're doing fine by yourself, but how about if I give you a distance attunement? This is somebody in, in uh, Boston. Mm -hmm. She lives south of, or not Boston, Massachusetts, south of okay. Boston. All right. So she gave me a tune from a distance, and that's wild. You can do that. It travels that far. Mm -hmm. And so she did, and that was really cool. Wow. And then that's, that was when, um, and you start feeling sensations. Like right now, I'm, there's a thing called grounding, mm -hmm. and you want to stay grounded. It's like a tree has roots in the ground, and the only way it can stay, stand up and stand tall with all the branches and stuff is the roots stay really deep in the ground. So um, yeah. so I feel, I'm feeling, constant feeling, constantly feeling energy <laughs> coming out my legs and out my arms, and that's kind of cool. Mm. But Interesting, very so I started attempting um, distance healing with just an attun one attunement, but I already had all the knowledge. I had read three books on it, and I did it on a friend I met on one of the, the uh, pages who is a powerful psychic, and she said, uh, she said, that was great, and I told her what I saw because with distance you use visualization, and I've always had a vivid imagination and I thought I was imagining all this I saw her lying down on I thought it was couch but it was her bed eyes closed and she was smiling and she said I was smiling she said no hon you were actually here you were astral traveling your presence was here with me I'm like holy crap it's real she said yeah it's real and I said then how is it I know how to do all this stuff and I've never done it before. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, hon, you were, you were a master healer in a previous lifetime. I'm, I'm seeing you around World War I as a medic in the Army. And you go back a lot further than that. Wow. And then uh, a second person said, yeah, you were a shaman in a past life, too. I'm like, and I'm like, that's why I feel connected to trees. Yeah, and, okay. Wow. Well. And so I'm like, wow, you know, and so all this in just a matter of months, yeah, you know, right. technically from August to now, six months time, I mean, right. everything just like the universe just opened up and, and now I'm, I can do that. I can do angelic messaging. Um, Cause you said you, you're going to have a podcast on that. Uh, right, yeah. And I'll, I'll circle back to you when, we'll, when we get that squared yeah. away. Cause that, that topic will be, we'll definitely dive deeper and uh, have a few, yeah. few guests on. 
Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that I could do automatic writing and I was, I'm doing that now. <laughs> uh, crossover facilitator, my brother-in-law died about two months ago mm -hmm. and I, I helped him cross over and I didn't know that I knew I could do it. it and it just fell in my lap and, and my wow. friend helped me with it and she said, oh yeah, you've done this. <laughs> it's all coming back to you. You're remembering it. So that's amazing. <laughs> Very, very, and yeah, yeah, we'll definitely um, pick this conversation up on on, an, oh, yeah. on on the paranormal podcast. So, all right, uh, again, let's. Uh, yeah. I want to wrap this up. We yes. got going on our music wise. You 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 doing any live streaming or anything to that effect? I haven't, but I've been thinking about it, Kev, and um, in a different manner because I still have my job mm -hmm. and my wife works at target. So she definitely has her job. Um, if, if the government calls for a shutdown, they're saying all non-essential businesses. Now they just made that announcement. If that happens, I'll, I'll be doing the, uh, online live music, but, uh, you know, if, if it affects my funds, I'll do a, put up my PayPal and Venmo for me. But right. I, what I thought about doing is uh, gathering a list of the musicians that are really hurting mm -hmm. and, and posting their Venmo accounts right. and PayPal's and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll play the music and I'll say, click on their links. Yeah. There you go. Donate, donate to them. Cause they, yeah. they're really hurting. Yeah. You know? There's, there's, there's the, uh, those that, you know, that's their livelihood playing it is three, four nights a week. And yeah. that's, that's their thing. And yeah, so there it's, it's, and they work in the restaurants that they, and then yeah. that they play at. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so they're yeah, all literally gone. all gone. Yeah. That's scary, man. And so who, I, I've been there, you know? Yeah. And we don't know realistically right now, we have no idea when, things will start getting back to normal. Yeah. Can hope yeah. can hope and wish for it. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. I think, uh, from, from a state perspective, we've got, a we've got a guy who's leading us in the right way, keeping us up. He's yeah. doing what every, what five o'clock now it's the, uh, beer. Yeah. What do they call it? Uh, <laughs> I guess the, I don't know. They've got a, I don't know. Names. The Bashir yeah. hour. The, the yeah. The hour. Andy hour. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I was texting. Well, I texted you and said, "How dare you for interrupting Andy?" Andy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. it's the Andy show. Yeah, and and uh, my friend in Minnesota, I said, "Gotta go." Governor's on. She's like, mm. "Oh yeah, okay. Call me later." You know, <laughs> like good stuff. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny, but when you hear other states, I mean, you made the Huffington Post saying mm -hmm. this is this is how it's supposed to be done. Yeah, you know, and that was that was a week ago. I'm mm -hmm. like. He he's showing himself to to really um, um, become a p potential political factor, you know. Yeah. From this point on, out even you know outside Absolutely. of the state. So, oh, all right, yeah. my, my friend. Um, always good talking to you, and um, always good, Kevin. And let's uh, let's do it again. I've got some of these lined up to maybe uh, I could use a co-host. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I am here. I am here for you. I appreciate it. Say hello to your wife and uh, wish you the it. best. And uh, we'll, we'll connect again very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings. Peace to all of you. Peace Thank and love. Thank you so much. All right. Take care, brother. Yes.